Hello Spectrum, welcome to the premiere production of Noise News. I'm Parker. And I'm Jesse. Due to bloody events, Ben is no longer with us. Yep, looks like you're stuck with me for one more show. <laughs> Let's get started. Our story of the week, Pink Out with Carter and Lauren. Every year, the Spectrum Volleyball team has its annual Pink Out event. Pink Out is a breast cancer awareness event. It's a fundraiser to raise money for breast cancer awareness. Um, and the volleyball is going to have a game against Maranatha Christian. And the JV is at 530 and varsity is at 7. And we do it every year. I think it's our fifth annual one. And everybody wears pink and it's really festive and we raise a lot of money for charity, and everybody has a really good time. The volleyball team raises money to donate towards breast cancer awareness. So this year we're selling um, sunglasses, bracelets. They're really cute. They're tie-dye, um, both of them. And then these cute lanyards that have little um, breast cancer awareness signs on them. We're selling them at lunches, and they're all pretty cheap. and. They're really cute, they raise money for breast cancer awareness, and you can also wear them to the game to support the Spectrum Volleyball team, so. Yeah. Pink Out is an event that gets students to support breast cancer awareness and also our volleyball team. I'm actually super excited to see everybody in their cute tutus because people make them at their house and they're so glittery and sparkly and then they come to school and they just look so good. Overall, Pink Out was a success with a JV win and a varsity loss. That was just a great job, everyone. That was a fun game. Now let's go to our special news anchors, Preston and Carter. Wadi is a 15-year-old girl at Spectrum High School who enjoys participating in her family's religion, which is Hinduism. Um, well, I'm Hinduism, um, just Hindu. Um, my parents are from South America, Guyana, um, West Indies, kind of. Um, my great, well, kind of my ancestors came from India, so that's how Hinduism came down to my side. Um, so yeah, um, what I'm wearing here is a sari. Um, you can also wear, uh, for men, it's kortas. Um, and then we also have a dress that's like about knee cut and there's pants underneath, not leggings. It's just kind of low, like looser pants, um, which is called dhoti. That's what my mom calls it. Um, and yeah. Although Samwadi may seem like just another regular student, her and her family still enjoys participating in the traditions of Hinduism. Traditions. Well, there's like, we celebrate each god, like, different months. Um, this month, I'm pretty sure, or November, um, there's Diwali, which is celebrations of light. Um, so yeah, we usually we always celebrate that month for sure. Besides that, we do our little... Um, get together with family and pray together and like we always say family who pray together stays together. Samwadi loves the atmosphere and feeling of a Hinduism wedding and suggests that if you ever are invited to one you should attend. Okay so um, Indian weddings um, they are pretty not your basic walk down the aisle say I do it's not like that um, our Hindu weddings go on at least like four or five days. It's like very long. Um, the best part about it is the food, um, the clothing, because it, it's all grand. Um, usually when a um, uh, girl is getting married, she usually wears red. That's the typical red and gold together. And it's just a huge building with like, it's a very colorful. Um, Besides that, it's not your ordinary wedding. I would recommend you, if you ever get invited to one, go to it. You'll, you won't regret it. If anyone has any suggestions for the next segment, please contact Miss Kress or Zach Clark. Yep, but for now, let's send it up to Camille and Anthony for Kinney Folktales.
Miss Kinney has been doing a unit on Chinese folk tales for years now, and we wanted to learn more about it. During my 11th grade English class, we are doing Chinese folk tales, and they are renditions of folk tales that we read, and now we're making plays out of them. They aren't written as theater, they're written just as stories. So we are taking those and transposing them into plays that the kids then choose their own cast members and produce for the class. I hope that when they finish this unit that they will walk with critical skills, critical thinking skills that will help them to take something and change it into another form in order for that to have a different viewpoint, a different way of reflecting upon it. They are Chinese, so they're from ancient China, they're from the Han Dynasty and some of the other dynasties and they deal a lot with Buddhism and fulfillment and philanthropy and generosity, Taoism, methods like that. After hearing Ms. Kinney's perspective, we asked a student what she thought. I performed The Bagged Wolf with my friend Landon, um, but I was also in four other plays. The Bagged Wolf's theme was don't put your trust in other people. I really learned a lot from this unit because not only just from the plays, but also from the book that we had to read. So first we read a book about the Chinese folktales and there was like different little folktales, um, different little stories all in one book. Um, and just reading those were like, it helped me a lot. And then once we got to see it as a play, um, it like helped us all visualize or it really helped me too because some of the stories were a little bit confusing when you read them but then when you saw it you're like oh that's what happened. I thought this unit was really fun. Not um, Also not only just because of the plays but um, it was really interesting to read each different story and like how the Chinese like or what the Chinese thought was funny or like what they would do or like blah, all that stuff. So it was really interesting to me. Um, just to see like how they act in their more of their side of the culture and also the plays were really fun because I love acting too so. Now that you know a little bit more about what to expect we hope you'll be looking forward to taking this class. Wow that looked like a blast. I wish all assignments were that fun. Speaking <laughs> of fun we are going to go explore the new Minecraft club with Ben and Preston. This year, Spectrum has started a new gaming club for students who are interested in playing Minecraft. We interviewed them and asked them how long they've been playing Minecraft. It started when I was about nine when I got a Kindle for Christmas, and I've been playing on Pocket Edition ever since. About five or six years, I guess, I started. I have been playing for about five years, ever since Minecraft was fun to play. And I have been playing Minecraft for about the same time. When asked what's their favorite part about this club, they responded with relatively similar answers. When you just, we're just teamwork and we build things together, even the last time we played a player versus player thing and tried to kill each other. That's fun too. Um, probably the co collaboration. Um, how you get to work with your friends and everything, and do just fun projects and stuff. Well, my favorite part about the club is that we get to play Minecraft in school, and that we get to lead a group of poor, innocent middle schoolers in our escapades of Minecraft. Definitely. I agree with his points. So all in all, these kids are excited to play Minecraft and have a safe place to play with their friends. They're excited to meet every Tuesday and Thursday after school in Ms. Mackert's room. This has been Preston and Ben signing off. Okay, that looks like it would be a fun club to be in. Definitely. Looks like they're mining their way into new adventures. Okay, now let's send it over to Jesse and Adrian with the story of Ellie's 1,000th assist. Ellie has been working on varsity since the seventh grade and recently obtained her 1,000th assist. The Noise Newscast would like to congratulate Ellie for her 1,000th assist. Coach wasn't telling me because he didn't want to freak me out, but like right after it happened, Jasmine looked at me and she smiled really big and she's like, "That was it." And I was, I was like, I guess shocked. I didn't really know how to like react. And then the whole team came running on the court, and it was really special. <laughs> How proud were you of Ellie when she hit her 1,000th I was super excited for her because it's a monumental thing and it's one of the milestones is to get 1,000 assists and her going to Spectrum and being a junior is really crazy. Wow. 
1,000 hip. Did you guys celebrate or anything? Absolutely. We all ran out on the court and surrounded her with all the posters that we had made and screamed. Honestly, I feel like the team was more excited than she was. She just felt kind of awkward because we were all like freaking out and screaming in her ear. She's like, oh my gosh, yay! <laughs> Can you tell me about your experiences with Ellie? I have played volleyball with Ellie since third grade. She has always been the setter for my team, and I used to be the middle, but I don't play more because I'm way too short. And she, she's always been on my team, except when she went to Spectrum, I stayed up with her, and then I came back to Spectrum, and she was my setter again, too. So, yeah. Um, assist, right? Yeah. yeah. How proud were you when she reached 1,000 assists? I was very proud of her because knowing her since third grade, it's been like a cool experience for her, and I'm glad I could share. This has been Adrian and Jesse from Noise News signing off. Congratulations, Ellie. Great job. Congrats to Ellie for that amazing feat. In other news, we are going to throw it over to Katie and Kelly for a look at some freshman artists here at Spectrum. Better? Yeah. And then these ones, I drew several. There are many artists here at Spectrum with many different types of styles. Today we've chosen to take a look at three ninth grade artists from Spectrum and their artwork. My name is Rachel Roberts. I draw lots of patterny stuff like Zentangles, some people have heard of that, but mostly mandalas. It's like this cool circle thing that has like lots of patterns and designs and it's symmetrical. That's why it's my favorite. Uh, I use a lot of pens and fine point markers. I don't really color. I'm not good at coloring. <laughs> And I'm not really good at pencils either. I mean, you should see my failed art projects. Shading doesn't work for me. Started drawing when I could hold an object. Like, really young. <laughs> I don't know, like two or three of those holding lots and stuff and just drawing all, all day, every day. Why do I like to do art? You know, it's just my favorite subject and I'm good at it, you know? Next we have Will Miltage, who loves gaming and making YouTube videos. In school, I do uh, more cartoons because you have um, less time to do it during class or during study hall if you have all of your homework done. Um, and so at school I usually do cartoons, but at home when I have more time I do realistic. I, uh, I have quite, I have one self-portrait, but a lot of time I do, I do draw realistically. I usually don't draw with pen because I can't erase it. I would like to be able to eventually draw with pen, but uh, for now, I just draw with pencil. I don't usually color because um, I don't stain the lines very well. <laughs> um, but honestly, I like, the, I like the looks of black and white or grays shades a little bit better than I do color. Uh, just just because I feel like a lot of the times when you're coloring with any type of color, it turns out sloppy, depending on what you're drawing with. But with what I have access to, it always turns out more sloppy than what it began as, you know, just in pencil. Finally, we have Kelly Blancett, who loves to read and annoy her brothers in her spare time. I draw dragons a lot. It's probably like the go-to drawing for me, but I draw a lot of other stuff landscapes and horses and bulls and that kind of thing. I use my 8H to 8B pencils. Um, those are different types of leads. And then I also use my blender and sometimes charcoal, I believe. Charcoal pencils, specifically. Like, it's fun. <laughs> That's exactly. really like my main driving force like in art right now, or I have drawn one. Um, we're doing landscapes, so it's like my teacher, Miss Johnson, comes up and she's like, Oh yeah, what are you going to draw? Um, I'm not really sure yet. <laughs> as long as it's fun, then that's the main go-to point, because if it's not fun, then I'll just shade it halfway and it looks weird. Let's hope these artists continue to create. This has been Katie and Kelly from Noise News. Those are some good artists. Anyway. That is all the news we have for you today. I'm Parker. And I'm Jesse. This has been the pre premier production of Noise News, keeping you in on the noise. Wait, yeah, bloody you guys make it sound like he died.
Two body events. Yes. It was her idea. <laughs> but then we can say, hello Spectrum, this is a special live event from In the Hood. I don't know. I'll show you. Uh, no, never mind. It's not cool. Yeah, it is.